Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 11th of January and we are going to deal with two very important topics which are in news. The organ donation. There is a case before the High Court of Delhi where you know an Air Force veteran was advised kidney transplant in 2017 but could not get it. Again, he was advised in 2019 could not get it. 2020, they approached the High Court. In 2021, the High Court asked the central government to expedite the case. Why the central government? Because there is a law which you know is made by the central government for organ transplantations and donations. There were administrative lapses by the authorization committee which is responsible for administering organ transplantation and donation. And now the High Court has said that within six to eight weeks of the application received by authorization committee, the transplantation should be done. Unfortunately, that Air Force veteran lost his life in this administrative lapse. Hence, the judgment from High Court is there. Next is India, a pillar of stability. These were the same words told by our Prime Minister in the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit, the 10th edition of that, which has started yesterday in Gujarat. The summit seeks to invite investments from the private sector, not only in India, but all across the world. This year's vibrant Gujarat Global Summit is basically themed around semiconductor chip investments in Gujarat. Many companies like Tata, Micron Technologies, they have pledged to invest in Gujarat. Apart from it, you know, investments in the energy sector are also coming. Our Prime Minister highlighted India's position in the global world right now and highlighting the stability India poses, the growth India reflects and the aim of India to become a developed country by 2047. All these are poised in favour of India and India is presently the fastest growing economy soon to be the third largest economy by 2027-28 and by 2047 a developed country these were the words you know in short said by the prime minister in this inaugural session of the 10th edition of vibrant gujarat global summit let's get started with the first topic that is organ donation in india now if you seek an organ donation in india that suppose kidney god forbid you don't seek but yes if you know there is a person x and that person seeks kidney donation then there is a procedure for that what is a procedure you either first go to your near relatives near relatives husband wife daughter son grandparents or grandchildren if you don't find a matching kidney in this group then you go for distant relatives Distance, distant relatives may include your in-laws or your friends. And there, when you go for taking, you know, donations or uh, I would say kidney transplantation from your distant relatives, the authorization committee comes into picture. The authorization committee is a committee which has been formed by the government under the Transplantation of Organs and Tissues Act 1994. This authorization committee will authorize that donation also oversee that there are no financials involved in this these are known as altruistic donations by the distant relatives authorized by authorization committee or administered by the authorization committee this is basically the general route of getting any organ transplanted donated now this particular act the transplantation of organs and tissues act 1994 also you know authorizes or also overlooks the donation of organs from the deceased persons let's suppose someone from my family has died so i wish to donate the organs of that person so uh, i will be able to donate and this particular law that is the transplantation of human organs and tissues act 1994 gives me that I would say right now <clears throat> let's see what the case was and there was this Delhi High Court judgment on this particular case that is why it has become important 
A petitioner seeking a kidney transplant died waiting for permission to come through. That is something which is disturbing. Now, while there are stringent rules for organ transplantation, the court has said that timeliness must be followed in the true spirit of transplantation law. And what should be the timeline? Timeline of 6 to 8 weeks to complete the process of transplanting organs from living donors. Complete the process. Now, in this case, was ha what happened was to the authorization committee, the plea went. Authorization committee approved that plea within one week according to the center. But according to the petitioner, they did not. But let's suppose we, we consider the point of the center that they have completed the formalities within one week from when they received all the documents. But that authorization committee, after completing that formalities, have to take interviews of the donors and the recipients and the family members. That interview was not conducted. And when that interview was not conducted, we cannot proceed for donation. This delay actually led to the death of that person. And that is why the High Court is saying that the entire process, approving the application, conducting interviews, administering transplantation from one donor to the, I would say, recipient, that all should be completed within six to eight weeks. Prolonged delays can cause significant mental and physical language for the donors, recipients and their families. So, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has been directed by the Delhi High Court to ensure that timeliness under transplantation of Human Organs and Tissues Act 1994 rules are there, are, are prescribed. Now, under this Act, there are rules which were formulated in the year 2014. So, this timeline should be prescribed in those rules. That should be undertaken. Now, the 1994 law, what is the law says? The law governs transplantation of human organs and tissues in India, including donation of organs after death. So, if someone wishes to donate organs after death, then that is also governed by this. It lays down regulations governing healthcare providers and hospitals and stipulate penalties for violations. A transplant can be either from a pool of organs of deceased persons or donated by the relatives from a living person who is known to the recipient. Now, who is known to the recipient? There are two types, near and distant. In most cases, the act allows living donations from close relatives such as parents, siblings, children, spouses, grandparents and grandchildren. These are all near. Altruistic donations from distant relatives like in-laws or long-time friends are allowed after additional scrutiny to ensure there is no financial exchange. This is something which has to be looked into. Now, if a near relative wants to donate, then after establishing the kinship, family tree and all, no medical authorities can allow. But if a distant relative needs to donate, then in that case, authorization committee is formed. We need to look into this. Living donations from the close relatives involving Indians or foreigners must be accompanied by documents establishing their identities, family trees and pictures that prove the donor-recipient relationship. Donors and recipients are also interviewed. Donations from unrelated persons, means distant relatives, require doc documents and photographic evidence to prove their long-term association or friendship with the recipient. These are examined by an external committee to prevent the illegal deals. Now, this external committee is this authorization committee, which comes into picture when donations from distant relatives have to be seen. Offering to pay for organs or supplying them for payment, initiating negotiations or advertising such arrangements, looking for persons to supply organs and abetting in preparing false documents can attract a jail term up to 10 years and a fine up to rupees 1 crore. This basically is there in the law. You cannot ask for money. Now the authorization committee, which is in which comes into picture when donations from distant relatives have to be seen. 
ऑथराइजेशन कमेटी ओवरसीज एंड अप्रूव ऑर्गन ट्रांसप्लांट प्रोसीजर इन्वॉल्विंग डोनर एंड रेसिपियंट हु आर नॉट नियर रिलेटिव कमिटी इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कंडक्ट अर इंक्वायरी वाइल रिव्यूंग एप्लीकेशन फॉर ट्रांसप्लांट अप्रूवल वट इज द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ दिस कमिटी सेक्शन नाइन फोर से इज द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ द ऑथराइजेशन कमिटी शैल बी एज मे बी प्रिस्क्राइब बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट नाउ एक्चुअली द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट प्रिस्क्राइब्स द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ दिस कमिटी ना हु विल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द कमिटी द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज शैल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट वन और मोर ऑथराइजेशन कमिटी consisting of such members as may be nominated by the state government and the union territories so state governments will form it state governments will appoint persons or ut government will appoint persons to this committee but that the composition of this committee shall be coming from the central government now this committee is there when uh, the donation has to be there from a living donor donor a distant relative now near relative medical authorities will testify and that will happen what if a person has to uh, take organs which have been donated by the deceased and now there is this deceased uh, i would say organ i would say bank with the medical authorities from there also that donation or that organ can be seeked by these recipients in that case actually the government or the medical authorities they testify it we will look into that as well now the rules section 24 of the act allows the center to make rules and hence the rules were made in the year 2014 rule 7 of the 2014 rules provide for the constitution of authorization committee and nature of inquiry and evaluation conducted by it authorization committee basically for distant relatives Rule seven three says the committee must ensure there is no commercial transaction involved in cases where the donor and recipient are not near relatives. Rule seven five says that if a recipient is in a critical condition and needs transplantation within a week, the hospital can be approached for an expedited evaluation. Now in this condition, the donations from the deceased comes into picture. if there is an urgency you cannot find any donor a living donor from uh, your near relatives or your distant relatives then you can approach the medical authorities it depends on your negotiations with them if the medical authorities yes they may charge you because they incur expenditures in in preserving that organ it is not free of cost their commercials will be involved so it is like this for living donor transplantations rule 10 describes the application process which requires joint applications by the donor and recipient rule 21 requires the committee to personally interview the applicants and determine their eligibility to donate now in this particular case what happened was that uh, the recipient and the donors they submitted their documents collectively it was approved by the authorization committee but authorization committee did not conduct an interview that was the next step and due to non conducting of that interview the transplant could not take place since the transplant could not take place the indian air force veteran lost his life that was sad so that is something which needs to be learned now the case a retired indian air force officer was diagnosed with kidney failure in 2017 by 2019 he was advised for transplant by two hospitals However his application seeking approval for transplantation was rejected by the army hospital in new delhi due to non availability of a near relative if a near relative would be available then the army hospital only would have authorized it but since a near relative is not available a distant relative is there so the authorization committee has to come into picture after the petitioner was diagnosed with hypertension and chronic kidney failure at sir gangaram hospital in delhi the transplant was planned again but no decision was taken and in 2020 the petitioner approached the high court seeking the transplantation in february 2021 the high court directed the authorization committee to decide the petitioner's application within 2 weeks now this is basically february 2021 october 2021 when the court again picked up this case for hearing 
then at that time the court learned that the petitioner had passed away now you see okay administrative lapses no doubt are there that is the primary reason but you also see the lapses on the judiciary's end february 2021 The High Court rejected authorization committee to decide petitioner's application within two weeks. So it should be the responsibility of the High Court, na? After two weeks, you should be hearing this particular case and asking or taking a follow up that how many the authorization committee have was formed or not, and what has been the decision that was not formed. The court picked up this case in October two thousand twenty one, eight months after that. and when in october 2021 this case was picked up by the delhi high court the petitioner had passed away then now the court has come up with this ruling that within 6 to 8 weeks the entire process should be there now you know obviously the delhi high court said that we will be hearing this case so that so what if that person is no more so even if if that person is deceased we will still hear the case the center argued that committee took its decision within a week of receiving all documents but counsel for petitioner contended there is no timeline for committee to conduct interviews interviews were not conducted that is why it was delayed and the patient had to you know give up on his life the court agreed and ruled that everything from conducting interviews to processing forms and decision making is to be done within a fixed timelines and that fixed timelines the court has fixed at 6 to 8 weeks and not in an expanded or elastic manner it should not be delayed because you know the mental health of the donors the recipients the family members of both of these donors and recipients apart from it the life of the donor is at threat and that should be expedited apart from it you know uh, when there are deceased persons to so the organ donation rate of deceased persons in india is very very less it is somewhere around 3.2% only 3.2% people donate their organs when they die in india if such people increase those who are dying and their family members are donating organs then that can solve the problem of many 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 living people who are ailing so we need to look into this aspect as well whoever will be able to afford those organs will be able to take it in fact the government can also step in in this domain and you know put a price cap in that this particular organ cannot be available more than this the so government can regulate this sector as well this will ensure welfare of the people this is what my suggestion is that government should promote uh, i would say more and more organ donations of the deceased and there the government can put you know ceilings price ceilings and all or regulate that particular sector india a pillar of stability now this was reiterated or iterated by our prime minister narendra modi in the 10th edition of the vibrant gujarat global summit now the aim of this summit is to invite investments from the private sector in the state of gujarat the state of gujarat which is actually very vibrant already may the the government wants to make it more vibrant the investments in semiconductor sector were the highlights of this year's edition of this vibrant gujarat global summit now highlights of the prime minister's speech india has emerged as a new ray of hope in global uncertainties global uncertainties like the russia ukraine war the conflict in west asia israel hamas or i would say climate change this climate change has been you know inducing a lot of disasters recently we studied about the floods in europe now covid-19 pandemic happened which is is considered to be the mother of all uncertainties in the recent past i would say you know all these uncertainties india has stood the test of time and india has delivered i would say that the world looks at it means at us in india as an important pillar of stability trusted friend and an engine of growth engine of growth because we are the fastest growing economy trusted friend because 
we are basically kind of neutral and we seek everyone's i would say benefit it is not like we seek our benefit there is no as such ally of india everyone is the ally of india that is why we have earned this tag of vishwa mitra so it is like this <coughs> india is looking for people centric growth where people will be benefited a voice that believes in global good that is why we you know exported vaccines to more than 100 countries in the world and what we were seeking the people or good uh, i would say humanitarian access or humanitarian approach was there we have been a voice of the global south a technology hub for finding solutions a powerhouse of talented youth and a democracy that delivers all this we are doing india would soon become the world's third largest economy it is expected that by 2027 28 we may be there the next 25 years the amrit kal which the government the, the prime minister actually defined it in 2022 and said that by 2047 we are going to be a developed country that we have entered in the amrit kal and a lot has to be done by india during these 25 years in the rapidly changing world order india is going ahead as vishwa mitra a friend of the world india is committed to world welfare its dedication efforts and hard work are making today's world more secure and prosperous he said that priorities and aspirations of india's 1.4 billion citizens and their belief in human centric development coupled with the government's commitment of inclusiveness will definitely pave the way for development will definitely pave the way for reducing poverty and hunger in the country and make us a developed country by 2047 but the government alone cannot be able to do that it would be requiring the support of the private sector this is the private sector which generates jobs this is the private sector which brings in new and new technology and it is the private sector which brings in investments that is what the global gujarat summit or global gujarat investors summit was seeking for the summit was i would say a big ticket summit kind of because many many big dignitaries were there mr adani mr ambani or tatas they all attended that summit and they all pledged investments in the coming time in gujarat whether it be semiconductor industries or batteries for evs or the energy sector everywhere and this is the requirement for india in the amrit kaal and with this we've ended today's session i will be meeting you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces till then you guys keep studying keep reading keep writing and most importantly keep revising namaste jai hind